the forests of Florida are some of the most amazing ecosystems in the state. They are full of life and provide shelter for rare plants and animals. They play a crucial role in filtering our air and protecting our water. In January, I was invited to attend a workshop at the Carlton Reserve. Donna Day, a volunteer naturalist at the Carlton, was coordinating the workshop on native bromeliads and the invasive pest that is destroying them in Florida. I went and I was stunned. I found that our traditional Florida forests were in grave danger. This is the Florida Field Journal. Even though I have been concerned about invasive plants and animals for years, Dr. Teresa Cooper from the University of Florida and Mike Owen from the Fakahatchee Strand Preserve State Park gave presentations that left me very worried. These bromeliads are very ecologically important, especially the tank bromeliads like Tillandsia triculata. Uh, they hold water in the axles of their leaves, they call it phyllophthalmata. And within that water you have aquatic ecosystems that develop, and they can be very intricate ecosystems. And um, uh, not only that, but they harbor animals that are specific to that habitat. So if we lose the vermilion, we lose the water, we lose those animals also. So what we're looking at the ecological disaster that could be caused by this weevil. It's not just the 12 vermilions that are at risk, but also um, at least nine, perhaps 19 invertebrates that are, are, are at risk of extinction because it, and five of those invertebrates seem to be persinctive, like semi-lot found only in Florida. So if we lose the vermilions, we lose the organisms, but we also lose habitat for Fuji and water sources and hunting grounds that are up in the canopy. It changes the canopy when you remove the vermilions. So just how bad is it? I went back down to Carlton to take a look at their vermilions. Donna Day joined up with me since she is their chief pest inspector. I'm Donna Day and I'm a volunteer at the Carlton Reserve. How long have you been here? Oh my goodness, uh, probably been doing this almost nine years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How long has the reserve been here? The reserve has been here since the 80s, so we're very blessed to have it. It's a great place. It is, oh my goodness. It's. There is a problem here though. Yes. <laughs> Actually, it's in South Florida. Yes. Now that we have an invader. Yes, we do. How do these things happen? How does this virulent destroyer end up coming into this state? Well, that that's that is a very important question, and and it was the matter of importing bromeliads from Mexico, and these bromeliads had the Metamasius calizona on them. As you know, bromeliads are a host to many critters, and so when we import exotic plants, it's, it's not unusual that they come with uninvited guests. And so that's what this Mexican weevil was, an uninvited guest that came into our state in 1989 in uh, Broward County and is now spread throughout the state anywhere Talancia grow. It affects uh, all species of native bromeliads? Or? Most of the ones that grow, but the one that it is most endangered by the bromeliad weevil, the Mexican bromeliad weevil, is the Talantia utriculata, the giant ear plant. And it's, that one is the most endangered because of a few reasons. The way it reproduces, it only reproduces by seed and it only creates seed after it's maybe 15, 20 years old. And 
before it reaches that point, the weevil could have already destroyed it. So um, the, the, the utriculata is the most endangered, the fasciculata is also quite endangered, the balbiciana, and the smaller, like the Spanish moss, is not endangered because there's not, not enough there for it to eat. There, there is a fourth one here uh, in Carlton mm -hmm. that also is being attacked for, but it doesn't seem to fit the profile of the larger plants. Are you thinking of the simulata? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it doesn't have as much meat, but apparently there's enough there that the larva can get in and, and uh, do damage. So tell me what you do. You, I, I know that you're trying a new technique. You're referring specifically to dealing with these weevils. And yes, we are. Um, we're trying several things, and we've been guided very much by Dr. Cooper, Teresa Cooper from University of Florida, is helping us figure out what we can do. We're, we're monitoring, we've been surveying, and one of the things that we're doing is actually putting out pineapple plants. And the idea of the pineapple plants is that they would attract the weevil to that rather than going to the utriculata. And, and, uh, seems to be working, <laughs> which is wonderful. These are pineapple tops and they're called traps by Dr. Cooper. And the idea is that the uh, Mexican weevil, the Meximasius calizona, actually prefers the pineapple to the Tillandsia utriculata. So we're hoping, and it's worked, and it's working, that the weevils will come here rather than attacking the, the Tillandsia. So that's what that's about. And we'll come back. We're, we're finding we are, we're going to need to come back at least every two weeks to check them and make sure that you know if there are weevils we want to remove them and then put fresh pineapples out to attract more weevils. I haven't done this on a pineapple before but on the Tillandsia utriculata it goes right into the stem and you can see some of the gelatinous um, secretion there. I want to take it apart totally. It's the, the larva that actually kills the utriculata. Oh, we've got a pupa, I do believe. That's what this little guy is right here. This is this is a good thing, because if they're gonna, they prefer the pineapple, if they'll go and eat the pineapples, then we're, we're protecting the utriculata, which is nice. When we, if we find larva and pupa, one of the things we do is try to keep them alive so that we can then determine from the adult which type of weevil it is. So the weevil comes in, lays its eggs, yeah. and then uh, the larvae. The is larva what, is what, what eats it up, and, and they and they get they get in the core on and it's this is presenting itself differently on on a pineapple than it does on the utriculata. It goes right and it just goes right into the stem and just eats the core out, and so that's it. And then the plant just totally falls apart. A utriculata that's been attacked, all of the leaves will just come off. Just it just totally falls apart. This is this is looking a little different, and I'm a little confused. But you know, it's a different plant. Uh, and then the pupa. Um, that's that's a small, a longer, no, a shorter time that they're in that stage longest is as the larva and that's where they're the most destructive. The ones that are in the pupa states are inactive. Uh, that's right. But Ray, it doesn't Ray take them real long to emerge. 
remember how many days it was, but it's not real, real long. It's, it's encouraging to think that we might be able to come up with something that'll keep the Lancia from being eaten. It'd be great if they preferred pineapple. Well, they do. Um, that, that Teresa has assured us of, so that's encouraging. Um, it's just a matter of we have to keep the monitoring because you don't want to be <laughs> propagating them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to raise a huge population of no. Mexican weevils here. No. Well, I mean, if they're here anyway, far better that they go and, and put their eggs in the pineapples. Um, because that keeps them away from that. That's why they're called a trap plant. Right? Yeah. Um, Bait and switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. not seeing anything at the base and I'm not seeing the characteristic holes so I'm, I'm wondering if these are just rotting pineapples uh, that's the way they rot that one though looks a lot like a pupa and I've, I've held them and raised them so uh, but this is just more like rotting material on the utriculata you'll see a hole how long have uh, these pineapples been out I think since Teresa was here, a good, a good week. So it's not real long. Was that even time enough? Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, they find it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. but the fact that all of these, the stems are coming out. Confuses me. It may just be that that's the way the pineapple rots back. Definitely be down in the core, and there could be larvae here. They're so small. The eggs are kind of like a creamy color, so they would blend in really nicely. It's not this black stuff. So those are suspect. Yes.
remember having seen it on a pineapple. I'm not... Well, we've seen it like with one trichilata that had adult larva and pupa. This one looks like there were two pupa in that one. That's really good. And in some of this stuff, I could have missed an egg, you know. It'll be in the last one. Well, <laughs> the, I'm pretty sure we've got pupa right there. Uh, I'm feeling encouraged about this. It's, uh, I say not having seen it present itself on pineapple before, I'm like learning as I go here. It doesn't do this, it doesn't seem to attack in quite the same way. They, on the um, utriculata, it's like they make Around the pupa, it's kind of like a funny, they take this brown material, make it like a little cocoon. What I'll do is put some of the nicer leaves in a vial with these guys, and then we'll see what, we, what grows from them. One would assume that it's the uh, Metamasius calizona. I think the native weevil, the Mosieri, even prefers pineapples. So. Pretty good likelihood. Anything that could potentially be harming, we want to get out, but we want to be just raise these and find out. This is just temporary. We have like a an aquarium that Ernie put together. That's kind of nice. That helps us so we can see what's going on and then see when they emerge. Give them a little more space. Examine the plants that are here for absolutely, and the summer is the most important time. Uh, starting April, May, June, July, that's when the weevil is the most active on the utriculata. Apparently, with the fasciculata, they're they're active all year long, but with the utriculata, those summer months are really crucial that we keep monitoring so that we remove anything that's been infested and we try to keep protect what's still here and keep them alive. And see, this is gonna be different. There's that gelatinous material I was talking about, and there's the characteristic hole. That's, real, that's very significant because the, the mother cuts a slit and lays the eggs in the slit, and then the, um, when the eggs emerge as larva, they, they bore holes so that they can get way down right into the core. And this looks like this is good. This is another pupa. Whoa! It was wiggling a little bit. Uh, I don't want to take it apart too much. Have. 
I would, you know, how I was describing it gets that brown material. That goes normally is around the pupa. At the base of this tree. There, you can see actually, this is larva right here. I don't know, there, I think there might be another larva in there. The head's at this end now. Would you put your head up? Maybe if I scoot it a little There. Um, there's the head. brown spot. They, I mean, they'll be right in this core. Just take the whole thing apart. Oh my god. I'm glad we're getting them out. It's like a morgue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid so. Plant morgue. But you know, the idea is to help keep them alive in the future. So um, if we if we can remove the weevil, that's you know potentially could get rid of a lot more. Of them. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is. Okay, now I've got the lid on that. Way I'm used to them just totally falling apart. I'm going to uncover it. Oh, no, it's still in marble. But that's the part that does so much eating. Stay right there. Yeah, it's nice. You see the hat. Fun if it was a really clear pupa. Can you feel it wiggling when you hold it? You, you feel there's something there. Yeah. 